Van Dyke Show. Starring Dick Van Dyke. Rosemary, Maury Amsterdam, Larry Matthew, and Mary Tyler Moore. Rich, I got a sneaking suspicion these are going to be the most gorgeous sunny side uppers ever made by a father. Whether to eat them, I have them preserved in plastic. <laughs> oh, those are pretty. Okay, the last operation. Ah, uh, ah, uh, a little sticky. There. There you go. Look at that. Two absolutely perfect unbroken yolks. Rich! <laughs> you made me break my yolks. I'm sorry. But look, you had to break them eventually, right? You'll never understand, will you? <laughs> Come on, Rich. You're going to be late for school. Charlie, have you heard a weather report? No, I was trying to make perfect eggs. Oh, well, see if you can get one on the radio, will you? I never know how to dress Richie for school. I don't want to wear a goofy raincoat. On the West Side Highway, traffic is backed up on the southbound lane. Please use alternate routes. The Grand Concourse and East River Drive are also heavily congested. Those are the alternate routes. <laughs> Only one of those days. Broken yokes, no alternate routes. What's going to be next? Time for the weather. Nighttime, daytime, summertime, wintertime. It's always time for the weather. Weather, 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 weather. <laughs> Weather, 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 weather. It's time for the weather, I think. Oh, well, thanks, darling. I don't need it. I just looked out the window and it's raining. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. I hate to wear a stupid raincoat. The forecast for the metropolitan area today is warm and cloudy. <laughs> Why is going to look out the window? And now back to music over W.I.F.E. Wife, the radio station most people are married to. <laughs> I'd like to have a divorce. And here's a little tune that just came out. Could be a real big one. It's the Dum Dums singing Bupkis. Bupkis? You took my arm, golden charm, a diamond mine, a love so fine. Yeah, but what did I get from you? Bupkis, what did I get from you? Bupkis, Bupkis is a lot of nothing, and that's what I got from you. Bupkis is a lot of nothing, and that's what I got from you. That Bupkis. Right. Listen, uh, can I speak to your uh, disc jockey? Is this WIFE? Good. Can I want to speak to your disc jockey? Yes, the morning man. Bupkis. Hello. Hi. I just want to ask you about that song you're playing. Yeah, that's Bupkis, right? Can you tell me what the name is on the label? <laughs> yeah, I know it's Bupkis. I mean, who wrote it? Buzzy Potter, right. Who else? Nobody? Just Buzzy Potter? You're sure? Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, yeah, it's a cute tune. <laughs> I thought it was cute when I wrote it. Hi, Rob. Hi. Are you going to hold the door open for me, Gentleman Jim? I thought you're carrying a coffee. What do you want? <laughs> Hi, Rob. Here's your coffee. Hi, right, Sal. Thank you. There. What you got there? Oh, all the music business trade papers. Boy, I haven't looked at those since Yucca Buck slipped out of the top 50. <laughs> Yucca Buck didn't slip, it was pushed. Hey, which one of these magazines is the best indicator of the popularity of a song? Eh, they're all about the same. Alan isn't going to do another one of those satires on rock and roll, is he? I hate them. I love them. They're funny. There it is, Bupkis by the Dum Dums. That's not funny. Yeah, but just look in the new release list there. Hey, let me see. Hmm. Bupkis, hey, that's a real song. Bupkis is a Yiddish word meaning nothing. Yeah, I know. I wrote that. You wrote Bupkis? Yeah. Well, I learned a lot of good words when I was in the army from Saul Pomerantz. Yeah. Bupkis and Schlemiel for Blungent and Simus. <laughs> hey, your name isn't here. It says by Buzzy Potter. You don't think any guy who wrote a song called Bupkis recorded by the Dum Dums is going to use his real name, do you? <laughs> 
It just so happens I wrote that song with Buzzy Potter. Oh, and they left your name out? No, he left it out. Oh, Potter's a crook. No, Petrie's a jerk. <laughs> well, what'd you do this time? Well, what do you mean this time? Want me to list it alphabetically? First time you said you were a jerk, you broke your tooth biting into a soft chicken sandwich, and then another time you were hypnotized, and every time a bell rang, you acted like you were drunk. <laughs> How about the time you landed in the hospital after you wrestled with a stuffed monkey? <laughs> well, what about when I left my script at Grand Central Station? Oh, oh, oh. And remember the time... Well, that's enough. I think we've proven what I am. <laughs> you guys remember Buzzy Potter? Uh, I remember Buzzy Potter. Yeah? Yeah, he's the guy who wrote Bupkis. You just told me. <laughs> Come on. No, I don't think you guys ever met him. He was a guy I wrote songs with in the Army. Oh. A couple of months ago, he started calling me on the phone, bothering me. I finally asked him to come up here. And we sat around talking about the good old days. Uh, Corporal Bloom. Hmm, that's it. And Lieutenant Plahakis, that's it. <laughs> that's right. You remember the entire company? Yeah, all 120 of them. Those were the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot one guy, the drummer. What was his name? Had a crazy name. I don't remember any drummer. So a six, uh, sticks Rangoon? Uh, yeah, that's it. Listen, you No, remember that's, the... that's not his name, not Rangoon. No, how come you remember everybody you don't remember the drummer? Who? Drummers! With all that noise they make, who can remember their names? <laughs> I do remember the first song you and I wrote together. Do you? No. Sergeant Foley is the guy in charge of our platoon. He bears a great resemblance to an anthropoid baboon. <laughs> You know, I got two weeks in KP for doing that. How come you did? Well, that's the breaks. Music business is a crazy business. Remember this from the review we wrote? Oh, it's a funny war. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I remember that. Let's see. I'm in love, I'm in love with Attila the Hun. Attila the Hun, Attila the Hun. Go we'll pillage a village and kill everyone. I still love Attila the Hun. That was a great song. Hey, listen to this. She was the only girl I ever really loved, the only love I've ever known. But why, oh, why did she stand in front of the guns of Navarone? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. No, I just wrote that. It's on the Alan Brady Show next week. I thought I wrote. Well... It just goes to prove to you, you still write the best lyrics, Rob. Well, not really. Oh, but... yes, you do. Since I got out of the Army, I tried writing lyrics with 20 other guys. And not one of them has that Rob Petrie touch. Uh... Oh, you're real talented. But I gotta admit, when I think of how lucky you've been, I get a little jealous in here. Oh, well, but I guess I've done okay. Okay? You're writing a top TV show and I'm still trying to peddle songs? Well, you know, Bud, you're gonna hit it someday. Well, I could, you know, if I had your help. <laughs> look, Buzz. Now, look, and we got over 12 great tunes in here with a little work that could all be hit. Oh, Buzz, you know the odds against that. Besides, I've got a job here. I haven't got the time. That's why I'm here, Rob. Give up this job. <laughs> what? Give up this job. Look, we'll push the old tunes and we'll sell new ones. Oh, look, Buzz. Come on, it'll be like the good old days in the Army. Well, to me, those days weren't all of that good. Oh, come on. Now, look, man. we could work a few evenings a week. I like to go home after work. Oh, yeah, sure, Rob. You got the uh, job and the home and the wife and the kids, and I got nothing and nobody. I'm sorry, Buzz. Well, being sorry doesn't help. I'm willing to give up everything I have to push these tunes, and you're not willing to give up a thing. Wait, I can't give up my job. Buzz, what do you want me to give up? I don't know, Rob. That's your problem. <laughs> Buzz, can I lend you some money? Oh, Rob. <laughs> well, the only other thing to give up are the tunes. Outright? What? What do you mean, outright? I mean, they're uh, mine, 100%. Oh. Okay. Well, okay, Rob, if that's the way you feel about it, we'll do it your way. Well, Buzz, I hope you find one song in there that'll make you a couple of bucks. Which one? Uh, any, anyone. Oh, well, okay, Rob, fine. Let's do this again sometime. I'm in love, I'm in love with a the <laughs> What else can I do? Anything but that. Boy, that was really stupid. You think so too, Sal? 
No, not at the time you did it. It was stupid at the time, too. Get a lawyer. Hey, my cousin, Irving, the lawyer. Why do we need a lawyer? To sue Buzzy. He stole half your songs, didn't he? Oh, didn't you hear? Mr. Nifty gave it to him. In writing? Well, it doesn't make any difference. It's a verbal agreement. Verbal schmerble. You could be losing a fortune. Well, what kind of a guy would I be if I went back on my word? My kind of guy. <laughs> he sent you up for it, didn't he? Well, I'm not sure. But you suspect? Uh... Then you need a lawyer. Irving, the lawyer. Oh, buddy, will you cut it out with the lawyers? Somebody got to do something. Rob, what did Laura say? Nothing. You mean she's that understanding? Sure. Besides, I haven't told her yet, and I don't think I'm going to. <laughs> just find this one piece. It's mostly lake with a duck's nose on it. <laughs> no. John, will you help me with this? Bob, you're staring at me again. No, honey. I'm just noticing how cute you look. I love your hair that way. Well, thank you, dear, but I always wear it this way. <laughs> I've always loved it. I just... I, I... Is there anything the matter? No. No, I was just sitting here thinking, you know, honey, life's a lot like that jigsaw puzzle. Oh, how? Well, it's like, a, you know, a lot of little meaningless pieces that... You put together, and then you, you you see, you understand everything. The whole picture, you know, like that farm in Vermont there. Uh, no, that's Central Park. It is? <laughs> Funny, upside down, that looks like a Vermont. It's, it sure is. Well, you see, everything looks different. Depends on your uh, vantage point. What, uh, what, what piece are you looking for? The duck's nose. Oh, yeah, that's a duck's bill. I know, I just like to call it a nose. <laughs> bill sounds too snooty. Ha! <laughs> I made a joke. <laughs> oh, you witty. Nice hair, everything. Nice smile. You're okay, kid. Mom, do you have my nose? No, honey. No, see, I don't have it. It's on here somewhere. Hey, how hey, do you remember uh, Buzzy uh, Potter? Buzzy Potter? Hmm? Oh, from the Army. Yeah, he dropped in to see me the other day. Oh, how is he? Oh, fine, fine. I always felt kind of uncomfortable around him. Yeah, me too. Mm. I never understood how you two got along, much less write songs together. He was kind of sleazy. Sleazy, boy, right again. They're pretty bad songs, too. Oh, wow. Woo, boy, the worst in the whole world. I'm kind of embarrassed I wrote him. You know what he wanted? A taxi cab. Huh? Forget the nose, look for a cab. It's a smart here. Oh. <laughs> Son of a gun, you don't want to team up again. What is to be partners again? What'd you say? Well, I mean, what would you say? Absolutely not. Right. That's exactly what I said. Good. You want some uh, coffee, honey? Mm, thank you. I'd love some. Yeah, I told him. I'm too busy. That's for sure. <laughs> right. You know, he wanted us to team up and rewrite some of the old songs. And I said, like you said, I said, they're terrible. Oh, uh, good. <laughs> right. That's what I said. <laughs> no, he was uh, <laughs> persistent, you know, and I... Uh, I, you know, I, I was very firm with him. Very good. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you know what I did? You, you, you don't know what I thought. What, I did. what, dear? Well, I'm, you know, to get him out of my hair and everything, I just, I gave him the songs outright, that's all. Well, I wouldn't have done that. You wouldn't have done that? Oh, no, Rob. I, they might have been rotten songs, but, you know, I, I hear a lot of rotten songs on the radio, and they're big hits. Well, yeah, but I said, feel sorry for him. Well, that's, that's very sweet of you, darling, but, you know, suppose one of those songs that you gave away became a huge hit. I mean, you'd probably feel awful ridiculous. Sit around here with your mouth open and blinking your eyes. <laughs> Rob, you're blinking your eyes. Rob? Oh, honey, you can't classify it as a hit. Yet, anyway. What? Bupkis. What? Oh, Bupkis. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. That's a hit? Oh, no. I, just, I, I, I don't know. I just heard it this morning. Where? On the air. Where? On the radio, the Dum Dums made a recording of it. Is it a hit? Well, no, honey, it's can't. Bupkis is a, a Yiddish word that means nothing. Well, and uh, Bupkis is... Bupkis is going to just turn out to be that, I think, just Bupkis. 
Well, you know, it, I mean, it might turn out to be a... a, a what is the uh, Yiddish word for... Oh, boy, did I go. <laughs> Try oy vey. Oy vey. Oh, that word's fine. Very good. Very good. What you get of it so far. Does Fuzzy get a royalty on it? Well, two cents on a record. <laughs> Darling, how much is a million times two cents? Oh, yeah. I'll never see the day that sells a million. How can you be so sure? If this reaches a half a million, I'll kill myself. <laughs> Look, just for fun, just for how much is a million times a couple of pennies? Well, I don't know. Uh, t uh, two... Uh, 20. I don't know. It's, I don't know. Two million pennies, that's all. Two million pennies? Well, only a million. I'd only get half anyway. Oh, would you just think what we could get with one million pennies? Copper poisoning? Oh. I'm a dope. I don't know what. To, I gave him a song. I gave him my word. That is it. Unless. Unless what? Well, unless he tricked me. Tricked you? Well, no. Forced me into, into a position where I had to do what I did. Is he that smart? You mean, am I that dumb? Well, it sounded nicer the other way. <laughs> no, honey, if I gave him the record, I'm just gonna have to be a good sport about it and live with it. Yeah, but if he connived and took advantage of your good nature... For which I am very well known. Yes! Well, then you'd have every right in the world to do something about it. It's a tricky situation. He didn't trick me into it, I just gotta live with it. If I can only talk to the guy. Better yet. Better yet, write to him. Yeah. Why is that better yet? Write him a note congratulating him on his success. Wait a minute. What, what do you see that I don't see here? Well, darling, when he gets your note, if he's any kind of a nice guy at all, he'll get in touch with you, and who knows? Oh, yeah. And if he's not a nice guy... Well, write to him and find out. Uh, no, wait a minute. You do the writing, and I am going to dictate. <laughs> Honey, look, don't mind. Just write. I'll, I'll finish it myself later. I'm s okay, you watch and I'll write. You broke my yokes. <laughs> Hi, Rich. Hi, Dad. What's the matter? Bob Kiss. Again? Yeah. Kids keep saying I'm a liar. Look, Rich, I'm telling you once and for all, pay no attention to what they say. I'm telling you that I wrote that song, and that's all that matters. But they say if you wrote the song, your name would be on the record. Rich, well, well that's a pretty good argument. <laughs> well, what do you say? What you told Mommy last night. What's that? The Buzzy Potter's a rat for not even calling or anything. And if you ever saw him, you'd break his nose. I never said I'd break his nose. I put that in to make you sound tough. Thanks. Mom, is that you? You just do your homework and forget about it. Coming. Hi. You know, that wasn't the greatest kiss in the whole world, but up till now, it's the high point of my day. Well, then, you better get ready for the low. Huh? Mr. Potter has replied indirectly. <clears throat> Sunderland, Sachs, and Englehart, attorneys at law? Why would attorneys be writing me? Maybe to tell you something legal? No. Dear Mr. Petrie, your kind note of congratulations to Mr. Potter prompted us to take this opportunity to ask for your signature on the enclosed document, which states you relinquish to him all rights to songs you previously owned jointly. Why, those dirty! Those dirties go on to say that your verbal agreement is quite binding, but it would be nice to have it in writing, legally. Oh. It would, would it? You're not going to sign it, are oh, you? Oh, yes, how do you like my penmanship? <laughs> we were worried about ethics and morals and your good word. You want to hear a couple of good words? <laughs> Mom, what are you going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Exactly what I can do, nothing. <laughs> nothing? Oh, I talked to our lawyer, honey. The verbal agreement is valid in court. The only thing this letter does is just change my attitude. Before, I felt 
stupid and suspicious, but now I'm furious. You know what you ought to do? You ought to go see Mr. Potter. Oh, no, but I'm going to go pay Mr. Potter a visit. Darling, I just said that. Well, what difference does it make who said it as long as they do it? <laughs> Rob, you're eating raw fish. You're telling me. <laughs> say he'd be back. Well, with him, you never know. He's a real operator. Yeah, I know. I'm one of his operations. <laughs> what do you know? If Frank Sinatra would sing this, it would be a hit. Listen, if Frank Sinatra would sing that song, it'd be a miracle. <laughs> uh, what does he know? Timmy Tone Deaf. <laughs> Is Mr. Showersand in? No, all three of them are out. They won't be in today until tomorrow. Anybody here from uh, Anvil Music? We don't have an Anvil Music here. It's right on the door. How about that? Boy, they come and go here. <laughs> Excuse me, miss. Oh, hello. For the 14th time, Sticks Mandalay to see Buzzy Potter. Well, for the 15th time, he ain't in, Mr. Mandalay. And for the 16th time, I don't have all day to waste. And the longer I wait, the rougher it's going to be on him. Sticks. Good. He's not my favorite Sticks person either. Oh, Sticks Mandalay. Sticks Mandalay. Yeah. Rob Petrie, Camp Crowder. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Just great, Sticks. How you been? Oh, fine. But I haven't been Sticks for about 10 years. I gave it up when I gave up the drums. It's Frank. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> well, I mean, Frank's a great name, but I'm sorry you gave up the Sticks. You were a great drummer. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I still, you know, paradiddle every now and then. When I want my wife and kids to know I'm still around. <laughs> I just use Sticks for the old army guys. Hey, you know, I ran into Buzzy Potter the other day, and I couldn't remember your name to save me. What? Well, I mean, I couldn't remember anybody's name, but Buzz Potter ran through the, reeled off every name in the company, and he couldn't remember your name. Uh-huh. He'd like to forget I'm alive. Why? Well, you see, when he and I were camp crowded together... Are you and he friends? Not at all. And what are you doing here? Well, I don't know. Sticks, I, I'm either going to talk to him or punch him in the mouth. <laughs> that you got to stand in line. No kidding, you two. He's got the whole ex-army after him. And a couple ex-wives, too. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing? Yes, he's like... I, I told you Mr. Potter isn't here. But Mr. Oh, Iron oh, oh, Well, well, the guest of honor. Hi, Buzzy. Hi, dolls. Come on. We want to talk a little business with you. Couldn't we make an appointment? This is the appointment. Do you think you could get away with it? Buzzy, you took... Why'd you do it, Buzzy? Well, well uh, after you shipped out, I heard you were killed in action. Where? There was no war then. Well, I thought that was strange. <laughs> but I tried to find you. Why didn't you look out here? Or answer my letters? Well, I would have answered your letters, but I didn't know it was you. How many sticks, Mandalay, do you know? Counting yourself? Oh, Why, there's one in Ohio. Oh, you took it, Rob. Uh, go ahead. You look madder than I do. <laughs> All I know is you stole nothing. Nothing? What do you... Nothing. Bupkis. Nothing is Bupkis. No. Bupkis is nothing. I wrote a tune called Nothing, and he turned it into Bupkis. <laughs> no, which is, uh, I turned it into Bupkis. You wrote the lyrics? You wrote the tune. Yeah. Well, fellas, what, uh, have, what did he write? I've been going here. He wrote his name on the music sheet. <laughs> well, listen, you're not just a wheedler, you're a crook. I'm not, fellas. Let's go. Not the way you work this out. Come on, the tune is. Hey, Mercy, hey, Mercy, congratulations on Bupkis. You got another one coming up? Sheila, get me a lawyer. <laughs> Why can't I think of something like that? Sheila, get me a lawyer. Hello, family. Hi, darling. Is that for me? That is for us. What is it? I'll show you. It is a framed copy of Bupkis, with the names Mandalay and Petri clearly printed beneath the title. Hey. And <laughs> my first royalty check. For the sum of 984 pennies. Well, that's for the first three months. Nine dollars and 84 cents? Don't get your hopes up, honey. I'm afraid they won't all be that big. Oh. <laughs>